are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone, Russell Wright, NetworkEmpire.com. Thanks for being on the call. I'd like to welcome, welcome our first few callers, Don, Eve, Ruben. Thank you for taking time out of your day. And as other people start trickling in, um, they'll be able to access the webinar replay uh, probably starting tomorrow. There won't be such a long delay this time. Apologize for that um, delay. Today we're going to be covering the content area, the content writer module. Um, if you guys have any questions, do please put them right up on the who's in me, what's it, and I'll answer, I'll get the questions to Matt so that he can answer. We're going to um, um, welcome Brian, it's nice to see you as well, and several other people coming on. Um, we're going to actually skip the presentation um, on the last part, how we go front to back, explaining the whole pitch about what DW does. We're going to take every kind of sales, um, any kind of sales speak out of this. I'm not even going to introduce what Domain Web Studio is at a global view because it takes so much time to cover the content writer area. I would say this is one of the things that Matt has worked the hardest on probably besides the promotional plan. Um, so I look forward to your questions if you have them. Now's the time to ask and long and the short of it, I'm going to step out of the way and let Matt um, get rolling. If Again, sometimes you got to slow Matt down because he built this thing and uh, he really knows what's going on with it. So just go ahead and raise your hand or create a question. And I'll butt in there and try to get him to slow down a little bit. If you have any specific questions, anything at all, it's easy for you to ask. Thanks, guys. Matt, thank you so much for um, taking time out today. No worries. Thank you, Russ. Um, hey, Matt, I've got some real serious noise in the background. Um, can you, yeah, I think it might have been something moving for you or water or something. Ah, uh, can you hear it now? Is it gone? Oh, it must be your printer. Yeah, it was kind of loud. It's gone now, though. Okay, no problem. Um, yeah. All right, let's uh, just roll it. Great. Uh, guys, thank you for coming to the webinar. Um, today, uh, we're going to be speaking about the content writer screen. This is right at the center of everything worth what we do in our business, um, especially with building websites and promoting and marketing. It's all down to the written word. And oh, hey, Matt. Sorry to, Matt, sorry to interrupt. Sure. Uh, you did hit record, right, because I did not. Yeah, I've hit record. Okay, all right, I'm back. So, so we've got this one. So it's all about the written word and how we go about getting the content into DWS. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to just take it from a perspective of being a single user, a small business, who's using DWS just to build out their own website. And then obviously, when we're actually assigning tasks, we'll see how that goes across to your team later on as we actually go through the process of signing content. So when we click on the content writer link, which is step number four in the stackable process, it takes us to the order website content screen. Okay. Now I'll scroll up a little bit here. Basically, when we order our content, what we're doing here is we've got to think about what we're writing. We're writing the primary content for a website. This is the, the place where when the people land, we have to actually think about where are they landing on our site, what is the message we need to give them, and what is the call to action. Because you want to have a call to action on every single page where you possibly can. And you have to craft your content in such a way that you address the pains that we've discovered in the ISDNA process, which is coming soon into DWS. Now, with the form, basically the first step is who's writing this content. So we can see our team members. Okay, If you don't have a team member here, simply click on step three, team member, and add the person. Come back to the content writer, and you'll see the person's name appear instantly over here. Okay. The next step is what type of article are you writing? Now, Russell developed in a stackable system, Russell developed the whole pain uh, pain article marketing method. We call it the PAM uh, method and this is where you write premium content that addresses the pains in the market but it's written in such a way that you can actually break the sentences apart and you can use them in your Twitter feeds. You can use them as headlines, you can use them as uh, small little comments. You can actually, when you write through the, the stackable system, you can actually break the whole article apart and you can broadcast it. So when you're thinking about your writing and what you're going to be writing, you also have to decide where you're placing your content. So what this content ordering system does is it takes all your content and it rearranges and organizes everything. And when a reporting module comes out, what you're going to see is you'll see X amount of articles have been placed on what ring. Okay. 
So the system will actually map out where you place your content and you can get a nice spreadsheet overview of how you stacked your content through all the layers that are across the web. Now, now that once we know where we're putting our content, the very next thing we want to do is what type of quality or grade content are we going to be writing. And we've got the level A, which is a PAM premium. This is well researched before it's written and it includes the DNA braid. The next is the PAM light. It's lightly researched before, but also includes your DNA braid keywords. Then we go down to level C, and this is our general SEO type of stuff. Grammar is correct, information-based keywords, blah, 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 blah. And you can see it's sort of the, the content degrades to an extent. We get down to level E where it's not proofed, spun content. And typically, level E would usually match either WRS3 or a W3 WebRing3. Okay, you never put a level E on a WR1 primary WebRing. Okay. Now the article length, this is just a range, okay, because um, no one writes to the exact word. So this is why we've put a range in here. It's under 500, it's between 500 and 1,000 words, it's between 1,000 and 1,500 words and so forth. The time allowance for the article basically is how much time are you allocating to this article, okay. So if it's a, a, a primary, uh, um, if it's a, a level one, you might say this is going to take us four hours. Okay. The agreed cost per unit, right? This is what are you going to pay per hour for the article. So if it's a top quality writer, you might pay $25 an hour or you might just pay a fixed rate. If you're paying a fixed rate, this sets the hours to one and put your rate in there. But typically, to keep everything in track, if you're going to have, if it's going to take the guy four hours to do the article, put the four hours in so you got your right time allocation signed off to the team member, and then divide the rate agreed by four and just put it in. So if you're getting paid sixty, sixty dollars an hour, you'd basically just go four times fifteen equals sixty dollars an hour. Um, are there any questions on this section? Because I want to make sure the guys really understand the power of this form. Um, the first two notes define how we put content across the web rings for our reporting. The third object over here defines the length, so we can actually see how much articles you're writing. And then these two here manage the people's time and the cost associated with them. And that deals with team management. So you can see how DWS is intricately connected to every part of the stackable process all the way through the system. Um, before going to step three, uh, are there any questions on the share, Russ, or is it still blank? Nope, you're good. You can continue. Okay, cool. I don't see uh, anybody um, stuck on that point. Right. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on this link, add your own custom template. You can also click on it over there. And what this is going to do is open up a page where we can create custom templates for our team writers or ourselves to write. And typically these templates, you can see there's one, something ways to lose in seven days. So when I click on this, I can come hey, in Matt? there. Yeah? Matt, can you go back about 30 seconds and start over? Um, there was a, apparently not just me, but there was an audio whiteout for about 20 seconds. Okay, no problem. Um, in step three, this is where we can actually create templates or writing style templates as we can use ourselves or our writers can use. And the way this works is you either click on add your own custom template over here or you click on it over here and it will open up a new tab which gives us our template. So we can give it a name, whatever you want to call it. We can give an instruction or we can go click on source and paste the, the, the legacy YouTube code and uh, have a video appear in our content. We can decide what level content must be written and we can actually put the template in over here. So. What I'm going to do down to the bottom is, and I look at this one here, we can actually come in and edit this. So if I click on this link, it'll open up the other template and allow us to edit that template. Now over here you'll see that we have the object code from YouTube pasted in over there. And what this will do is, when we assign this template to an article, it'll take the video and put it into instruction, and it'll also embed the template into the, the article for you. Okay. 
So that's what step three is. Is if you don't have any templates, you're not worried about templates, just leave it as none and it will do nothing. It won't put anything in. Now because we're writing on the primary site articles, at the moment we've just got the primary site over here. Before we had primary blog, but um, we found that confused a lot of people, so we just left it as that. <coughs> now the date, this is when you want the article written. And this is a, a big confusion point for people. Um, when they set the date, let's just say they make it, they want that article written in 2013 and they want it on the first month January and they want it on the seventh day of January. Let's just say the guys want to pre-set the date and have one or two or three articles written this date. When you come to your current tasks, right, if you click on it, you will not see the articles assigned to this date because they're not part of this month, okay. On step two, the current tasks, is the current tasks for this month. And the team screen works in the same way, okay. If you want to see all the tasks from now to the end, click on all tasks. Um, we found a few people come along and they click on current tasks and when they never saw their, their um, articles or their tasks there that need to be written, they sort of panicked and they thought, okay, the system is broken, it's not giving me my tasks. The reason for us subdividing the workload into four points, um, current tasks for this month, all tasks, completed tasks for this month, and all completed tasks was, when we go through the whole system and we order our primary content and we order our promotional plan content and we're doing all these things, there's so many moving parts happening in the process that the person will get a never-ending list. You'll probably get a few hundred tasks or a few thousand tasks that need to be done over a period of time. So just for sanity purposes and to make it not look frightening, when we look at the current tasks for this month, it's just his workload for this month and anything that is not completed from the last month. And that makes things more sizable, bite-side chunks, which makes them easier to process and it's not intimidating. So this is how we built the system to manage not only the people's workload, but to also sort of manage their frame of mind when they log into the system. Okay. So now that we've done this and we've actually ordered our tasks, okay, what we see below the order form, I was going to put this back to 2012, let's just make this 11 and let's just make this the 17th of this month. What we see over here is our current silo framework and we can see we've got a whole bunch of articles that are written, okay, they're assigned to me and Jack Sparrow and the content was written but this content over here is ordered but not written. When you see a double tick, it means it's ordered and it's written, okay? When you see a tick, it's ordered, a pencil, it means that it's not been completed, okay? So what I'm going to do now is show you how to order content. You simply just come in here and click the articles that you want. Now I've selected those four and this basically represents a silo and three categories within that silo. In this node over here, we had an office cleaning, which is a silo. We had commercial cleaning, which was the first category, and we had five commercial cleaning type keywords that were the supporting articles. And these five here are basically supporting the commercial cleaning, which then is supporting the office cleaning. And that's how we create the silo structure within the system. So to order the content, I want to assign a template to those four Okay, so I'm just going to take this one, Ways to Lose in 7 Days. Okay, obviously it's not the right one for window cleaning, but just for this demonstration, I just want to show you what happens. So I click Site Content. Same thing again, um, you can write your own task instruction over here. We've got on the books uh, at this time of this recording, the, we're going to be basically giving you the ability to actually create your own templates. So you can have a library of your tasks or instructions, so you don't have to keep on pasting them in. And um, this will basically allow you to just select the template and this will load up and you can just fire it off so you don't have to keep on rewriting the same thing. When we click send, this will email the writer. Okay, now I've sent it out to myself so I'll basically get that email. And when we come back to our screen, what you'll see now is those four pieces of content have been ordered. Okay, and we can't order them again. They've been checked out. And the reason for the, the green ticks here 
it's just to stop people duplicating orders, okay? Because we only want one article for one keyword on our primary website. Remember, we are at the primary website. This is where we're working. Okay, so the next thing we have here is the little tree structure. And we can actually come along here and we can see the silo structure. We can see where we've ordered content, what content's been ordered, what's been finished and written, and what's still to be ordered. Okay, now these are all clickable. You can click on any of these nodes. And if you click on the one that's finished, you can go and update it. If you click on one that's to be edited or written, it'll take you to the right place. And if you click on the one with the red dot, which is not ordered, it'll bring you to this screen over here where you actually see or you place your orders. Okay, so um, before I move on from this process of where we actually order the site content for the primary website, um, are there any questions at the moment, Russ? Looks like everybody's on board at this point. Okay. Right, so I'm going to get the writing screens now. And when we look at the writing screens, I'm going to look at the current tasks for this month. Now, we, we set those tasks for the 17th to myself. Okay, so over here, if you look at these ones here, there's the four articles that I've ordered for myself. Okay. Now, the way this works when you write content, you basically just click on the node and uh, a bit of the technical structure of how the screen works in the system is when you order content, it will always present the content in date descending. Now, here you can see that we've got work from the 30th of the 8th. They're only two months behind. Okay. Jack Sparrow is not doing his work. Okay. What I can do here, if this is a problem, I can come back to the team screen over here. Let's wait for the screen to load. I come to Jack, I click on the blue plus sign, view workload, and I've got the professional cleaning site okay, over here. I click on view tasks. And there's all the work that's behind schedule. So we can see that Jack has got a lot of promotional work and primary content that's behind schedule. Now, let's just say, for example, Jack's been in a car accident and he can't work and you've just found out. You can simply just go along and pass the work on to whoever else you have in your team. So if I click Submit now, you'll see that Jack's time decreases from 40 hours and my time will increase when the screen reloads. And that says how simple you move tasks around, content writing tasks around for promotional tasks or writing tasks. So Jack's time decreased. We come back to our, our current task for this month. Okay, that hasn't changed there, why is that? Right. So what we're going to do next now is we're going to look at the actual article when we come to write the article. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on an article to write. I select the icon. And what this will do is it will come up. And what we can see over here is we have no synonyms or supporting keywords for this specific article over here. What I suggest you do is always have your supporting keywords and your supporting synonyms before you start writing your articles. If they're not here, make sure that you've actually completed the DNA braid. The reason for this is um, these keywords that are the supporting synonyms and the supporting articles, the writer needs to use them and sprinkle them through the article when they're writing to get the DNA braid into the content. That'll help your keyword shingling, that'll cause keyword stemming, That'll make the sentences more real and, and better. The next thing I want to talk about is the article headline. The article headline will be used as the navigational link, okay, as well as the title tag in the silo export when we actually write them. So think of a, a good headline. Um, Russ, would you like to speak on headlines for maybe like two minutes, three minutes, just a short thing on the article headlines, why they're important? Sure. Um, I hope everybody knows by now that as the frequency of publication becomes more of a signal on the engines and with social media, uh, the frequency of publication has to do with 
are you updating your blog, are you adding new content, so on and so forth. Well, in our discovery through micro content publication, through auto syndication, and even syndication through social media spaces is that as long as you're changing the headline and keeping the headline congruent with what the topic themes and fears, pains, and solutions are in the industry that you're focusing on, uh, that you continue to generate traffic signal based on headline, which makes a headline probably the single most important thing that we all do every day, either badly or uh, really well. And so I would encourage everybody on the call to be considering headlines and thinking about headlines, but also be thinking about why they're so important. I mean, it's the last kind of meme, if you will, idea or concept left standing, or the first one that's revealed to the reader, uh, regardless of the context, regardless of the environment. So having a little bit of insight about how to write headlines and include your keyword, while uh, great for SEO, is now becoming more and more about you know, becoming a click magnet. So that's really what we're talking about here. So we want you to include all of that stuff, and the painkiller article method is the kind of content that turns all of the sentences potentially inside the entire content to pseudo important or magnetic uh, headlines. You want to have as many magnetic headlines without being hypey as you can. And a magnetic headline doesn't mean hype necessarily. It can also mean simply interesting or uh, interesting but incomplete or you know um, something that's intriguing or even alludes to a uh, solution to a problem. So we really want to, we'll teach you more about that and inside the members area we have great coverage on this in our various modules. So. Go ahead, Matt. Cool. Excellent. Thank you, Russell. So here you can see template instruction. Now when you click on this, okay, this opens up and it gives us the video that we put in, uh, that we embedded in our template. And the person can click on this and they can actually watch your video. So you can do a, a PowerPoint presentation. You can actually have a camera on yourself and speak to your outsourcer, whoever you're working with. And you can tell them, look, on this specific template, this is what I want from you to this is what I want you to do. This is how you write. And you can actually have a Camtasia and you say, this is how I want you to use this screen. See, there's, it's unlimited what you can actually do with the power of video in your template instruction. And then over here we can see there's our template basically embedded directly into the actual article. So um, that's basically what happens when you assign a template to it. Now, the article project name, this is a free text area, you can actually have this, it's more of a, a memo if you can call it, it's a way of, of just giving um, the, the, a naming convention that means something to yourself. The page title where it says meta, okay, all the meta stuff, this is all related to the, um, the page metadata that will get carried across with the silo export, okay, and this is where we've got the primary keyword, and if you add your DNA keywords, <clears throat> they will be put in in the keyword place as well. Your description, this is a very important part and your synopsis is a very important part. These are your elevator pitches. Your description basically when a person writes the title, when we go to Google and we do a search, what we want to do is we want to basically have, this is called window cleaners, When the guys check this out, they're coming here, they're looking for something to catch your attention and you've only got this little piece of information over here as well as the headline to basically get the click. And the better you can position your description and your headline and make it more captivating, you grab that click which increases your conversion. So when we come back to DWS, we think about uh, the silo blueprint where we set up our business rules up over here. If you can get your click-through rate to increase from 20% to 25 or even 30%, that means you're really doing well. That makes a massive impact on the amount of traffic that you get to your website. And the more traffic you get to your website, the more your costs reduce in developing, developing the whole platform. Okay. So once again, you can see how things are interconnected. So the meta description, the keywords, and the meta title, especially the title of the page and the description, this is selling the click. The title is telling the search engines what the content is about. Okay, you guys all know this stuff. The article synopsis is a short description which works with the WordPress framework, 
where you can actually have a synopsis leading into the actual article. So it's a short summary of whatever this article is over here. The publishing delay, you can basically set this anywhere forward or backwards by amount of dates. And you can have a present, past, or future. And with the plugin, it will preset the dates or make them go backwards or forwards, depending on what you set over there. Okay. So when you write your article, simply click Create Article. And what will happen is that article will move to the completed tasks for this month. Or you can see all the completed tasks over here. Now, if you want to see all the tasks, we simply click on All Tasks. And that'll give us a list of all our tasks that need to be written. Okay. And this is how simple this all works over here. So I'm going to take a minute and I'm going to log out quickly. Um, and I want to jump across to the, the team screens. Um, with DWS, you can't log in as one person and then log in as another team member. Um, it does cause complications with the sessions because typically, if you've got a browser with multiple tabs, they tend to share sessions. Okay, it, it gets it shares sessions across different tabs if it's from the same same platform, <coughs> and it has caused weird anomalies. So, if you just use one tab when using the system, and if you log into another screen for a team guy, do that. Now. Yeah, I've logged into Sarah's screen, and this is her basic workload that she has. So she's got basically a social group account to create some video accounts, blog articles, directory submissions. These are, this is all work that she has to do for this month. Okay, so when we click on current tasks this month, what I want to speak about here is there's four sections to the team screen. Okay, the first section is writing content. This is the primary content for the website. Okay. If I click on one, the current tasks for this month, that's the work they've got to do now. And that's why it's in position number one. If they want to see the current tasks, all the current tasks, we've put that into position number two. So there's been a bit of a debate, and I'd like to raise or we'll get your guys' feedback on this call here. What would have more priority for yourselves? Um, seeing all the tasks up front or seeing your workload for now? If you could just uh, ping Russell there what you reckon is better, seeing everything or seeing single, it would be really great for us to hear your guys' feedback right here on the call. Same story again, completed task for this month, completed task all. So this is all got to do with writing the primary content. This two is account creation, okay? And this is setting up all the accounts. And this is all the work that's here to do this month is on the account. So if we click on that there, you'll see that we get to see all her accounts. So there's nothing set up for there yet. Okay. Then promotion, writing primary content. There's all the promotional work that she has to do. Okay. So she's got a video to do. And it's all about hair. In her business, she's dealing with hair. So this is what she's targeting at the moment is promoting on hair. You can see that she's behind on a few keywords here. And remember when I said she when you don't uh, add your DNA braid, we're busy doing updates to the system to basically put your primary keyword in if you don't do a DNA braid. It's not recommended. Please add your synonyms or supporting keywords because then it will verify and spin out and, and change the signed anchor, anchor text. At the moment, it's just left blank, so you won't actually have an anchor text. You'll have to go and actually fill it in when you create your page. So um, if you don't want to do that, just make sure you do your DNA braid and you won't get the blank spaces over there. Okay. So when I go back to the home screen, <coughs> when Sarah finishes a task on time, she'll get a little green arrow pointing up. If she finishes a talk, task after the due date, she'll have a red arrow pointing down. And this is just to show, look, you're not meeting your goals. That's all it does there. There's nothing more than that. It's just a visual indicator that you're either on target or you're off target. Okay? Then publishing tasks. Um, this is where once the promotional content is written, it will then basically drop into her bin if it's assigned to her. Now, when we order promotional content in the next video, um, or actually in, in two weeks' time when we go through the promotional plan, you will then see um, how you can actually order content for one time and you can assign it to a, a promotional writer and you can also assign it to a publisher, a person who publishes the content and puts it on the web. Okay. Um, 
So these are daisy chain. As soon as they get finished here, they get dropped into this person's task and, and workload. Okay, so I'm going to log out of the screen here. Um, is there any questions on the the team screen while we yeah? Looks like I finally had a question come through. I'm just trying to figure out. I have something going on with my system. Hang on a second. Let me pull this up here. Hey Matt, can you see any questions on your screen? Yeah, um, there's one you say, Hi, aren't you afraid of footprints? All articles being the same format and also over-optimized. All pages are perfect. Um, we're not really giving footprints, Ruben. Uh, if you think of what we're doing is Thank you, every, every page has a unique DNA braid associated with it. Okay, and let's just say Page number one has got uh, supporting keywords one, two, three, and supporting synonyms four, five, and six assigned to the primary keyword, which is zero. When the writer comes in and writes the article and writes that page, he, the, you need to treat that page like a single entity. And if you're applying the PAM method of writing content, when you come to write your second article, you're not going to have the same story. You're going to be talking about something different. So when you think of the silo structure, um, let me just open up a note page here quickly. Right, so let's just say we've got article one. Okay. In this campaign over uh, here, basically what's happening is we've got the theme, the top level theme, which is a silo. Then within the, the, the theme, we have a minimum of five categories which define the conversation over here at a, uh, at a medium level, not a top level. The silent is the word that defines it at the top. Then the supporting articles over here, they basically define the category, okay? And they support the category or the conversation or the idea of the year. And it's the collection of these ideas that make that silo a theme, okay? So when we're writing a copy and we, we're going through each keyword, each keyword is going to have a different DNA braid associated with it. So if I log out over here and I go back to our, our silo framework screen, what we're going to see is um, we've got multiple keywords associated and each keyword creates a little nucleus around that campaign or that specific keyword we're looking at. Uh, it's not that one, it's this one here. So this, this the, the anchor text that we're talking about there, what happens is that gets carried all the way across through to the promotions. Now, obviously, with, when we talk about the hair silo, hair is at the top of the vertical. So you can have a lot of pages and content you're writing about hair when you're actually promoting it in that example that you saw over there. But uh, typically what happens is when we view the silo framing blueprint by clicking on that link, I'll go back because it was a bit fast. When we click on this link over here, can you see this, this link, Russell? I think Russell's not there. Um, Sorry, Matt, say that again. Oh, I was just wondering if the screen had loaded and you guys saw, saw where I clicked. Yeah, there's a, there's a slight delay, at least here in, in Arizona, but I don't know. Anybody else have a delay? No, it looks like you're fine. Okay. So what this does is, uh, when we look at this here, you can see, for example, commercial cleaning has got a unique set of keywords that define that specific page. When we come down to com commercial cleaning windows, yeah, we've got a different set of keywords that define this page here. Now, coming back to your, 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 your question about footprints, um, the only thing that's probably going to be unique is the actual platform that you use or the, the theme, but the actual content 
if you write it properly and you're speaking about that topic and using these specific keywords and you're not duplicating the keywords, what you're going to find is you're going to have a theme created where you've got multiple keywords defining a set of ideas and that's why you're not going to get a footprint and this is why we encourage people use the, the DNA braid, build it out so that when, when the anchor texts get created and they're linking back in, you're going to be using professional window cleaning because that's an important keyword defining that topic. We're talking about window cleaning, that's an important keyword that defines commercial windows. Um, window cleaning services, you can see I've only got three keywords that basically those three keywords define commercial window cleaning. And when we're running around we're using commercial window cleaning and then we're also using these keywords to link back to that one, we're creating a synonymic set that defines specifically what we're trying to sell. And that's why we won't get a footprint when we, we're using the system. Okay, so with the content writing screen, it's pretty basic. Um, you come in, you assign the content, you define what you want your guys to do, you make a template, put a video in, get the guys to write. If you don't have a team writing for you, you don't have to worry about logging to a team screen. You simply just come along here, start at the top of your silo, wherever you're working, click on that one there. Okay, I'm going to write this article now and start writing your article and, and, and just filling in all the gaps and, and writing it. And think about the story that you're telling the people. Um, once you've done there, you'll notice that this list will decrease or get smaller and smaller as you're writing it. And on the completed screen over here, when you're finished, all your content will actually end up in a long stack of years finished and you have nothing under your current tasks. So the DWS manages your content development production. It's the production line for writing all your content. And we've tried to keep the interface as simple as possible, guys, so that it doesn't become very scary and complex to write. Um, in the, the next iteration that's coming out, um, I've been working on a module that basically you'll click a button and it'll actually create your Google alerts for you. So what's going to happen is we're going to have another tab over, tab over here which will say create Google alerts. You'll click on that and that will basically go to Google, create a Google alert for that specific keyword and then in your writing screen, your writer will then, this screen is going to shift over slightly this way and you'll have links over here to the latest Google alerts that come through. It'll be an RSS feed that gets fed through the little pane over here. So your writer can click on that link and actually see what's coming on the alerts as he's writing the content. So we, we, we're integrating more and more things to make the writing more connected to the web. Okay, and this is the, the content writing screen. Um, Russell, do you want to speak a little bit about the actual writing of articles or um, are there a few things you want to cover for, for the guys <coughs> on this particular screen. Um, is there any questions specifically from anyone on the call about uh, any of the article writing methods that we speak about? I don't want to confuse uh, the way that you write and how and when you write specific ways uh, with the actual application. If everybody understands the application, um, at this point more or less, and you have any questions on the application, go ahead and, and ask that. Um, we do offer a lot about the painkiller article method. It's just a fancy name for talking about the kind of bullet point writing and problem driven and solution type writing that many of you are probably already familiar with. A lot of my early on education on how to write for the web came from Jeff Herring. I'm sure you guys are familiar with him. He's very well known. He's one of the more prolific writers on the web. He's, he's actually very technically um, limited in his knowledge of the web, but he generates millions upon millions of visitors per week because of the way that he writes and the way that he teaches to write. So I want to emphasize that you don't need technology to become a click magnet or a traffic magnet. Uh, you need to know how to present material in a particular way. And that's all I really will say here because we cover a lot of it in our course, How to Write. And further, there's other kinds of writing like press releases. And all of this, there's two sides to writing. There's what kind of feeling does it invoke in the person and does it get them to click the headline interesting but incomplete? Um, Matt, are we supposed to be seeing this? Or? Yeah, um, I'm, just, I'm just preparing something while you're speaking. Okay, excellent. Um, 
so just don't forget that we're all watching your screen. Yeah, no, I'm glad um, the guy saw that. <laughs> There's a reason for it. Okay. <laughs> oh, there is. Okay. Because <laughs> I can't in, on, imagine what the reason is. All right, so does everybody make sense? I'm getting no questions, which means you guys really don't need me to ramble on. Okay, cool. you don't want to know any deep, dark, hidden secrets about content writing on this call, so that's fine. Cool. Let's just continue, Matt. Okay. Um, one of the problems that a lot of hard disk questions I get is, oh, the formatting. Um, guys, when with the, the modern WYSIWYGs, right, when you basically take something from the web and you copy and paste it, the WYSIWYG will basically do it identical. It'll try and mirror what you had. It'll try and keep the formatting. So when you look at the source code here, you can actually see it's gone and it's put its own formatting in there. Okay? So if we get rid of that and I delete it, and I'm just going to open up Word here. <coughs> just waiting for Word to open up there. So I'm going to paste that in there. Now, if I go Control O and I Control C, and I go and paste back into the WYSIWYG, now it doesn't paste. Okay, there it goes. And we look at the code here. Yeah, we can see we've got all the style formatting from Word, okay? The WYSIWYG will continuously try to mirror exactly the source of where it all comes from. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of that again. If you copy from Word, Click on this paste here from Word. Click on that. Control V, your article in there. Click OK. And it'll put it in, but it'll still keep the same formatting. And this might be bad for when you are copying paste from different Word documents from different writers, okay? And they've they got different fonts. It's going to remember the fonts, it's going to remember the formatting, it's going to remember everything. And the WYSIWYG will change the style to suit where the source came from. It tries to mirror it. So when we save that and we actually want to preview it, okay, that's what we'll see. And we'll see that in our WordPress blog. So if you don't want to have formatted stuff, right, um, this is where another thing where guys are talking about footprints. Open up Word, uh, sorry, a notepad editor, control V it. And just get your spacing right and then get rid of the bullets. We don't want them. Do a bit of tweaking here up front. Control all that, control C that, and then you can just go and paste that straight in. Then you can use the WYSIWYG to actually do the formatting and it'll keep things uh, sorted. So you can do different titles, you can do cross trees, all that kind of stuff. You can actually give it a headline. Um, we can take this over here and we can make that a paragraph. That needs to enter there. And here you can use the things here. So when you input it into Word, then the HTML that we've created over here is light. There's no styling on it. You can see there's no styling in there. And it, it basically just blends directly into the style sheets that WordPress theme has. Okay, so um, if you're going to full content, if it's not written directly into the WYSIWYG and you're pulling it from another source, just tell your writers, look, don't format it. Okay, um, rather just have them send it to you in a text file, you can copy and paste it, have them do all the work, get all prepped and ready, and you just come in when you actually put it in or your writer puts it into the system, have them format it in the system. Two things happen. One, you don't get all the CSS style sheeting code that you get. Um, what I mean by that is, if I get rid of this here, um, and I copy that, and I paste that in. When we look at the code, we've got this over here the style equals line height normal. This will take precedence over your style sheet, your CSS style sheet on some occasions when you, you bring it in. Um, when you've got the span style font, family, times, Roman, it, it basically is setting the font for the thing and it's setting the size. So this will conflict with any style sheet that you have in WordPress when you bring it in and your pages will look a bit weird. 
So um, that's the only that's basically the last thing I'd say on this whole course over here on the writing and the technical usage of the DWS system. If you don't want formatting, take it to Notepad, put it in, format it in DWS. When you format it in over here, keep it as simple as possible. Just make the headlines, H1 tags, use your basic HTML, and then let your style sheet of the, the blog that you're building control the output and then it becomes easy, the, the process is easy. You basically write the content, you export it out, you import the content into your WordPress blog, it inherits the styling of the blog and there's no fiddling and tweaking and having to go clean up afterwards. So um, the core point okay. of the content here is just take a bit of time to do things with a bit of care up front and it'll save you a lot of work at the end of having to go clean up. You won't have to clean up, it'll all be prepped and ready for you. Yeah, okay. Um, Matt, there's a question that I can address. Uh, someone asked, can you integrate curation software in the WYSIWYG or maybe I should curate after importing the pages to my blog? One of the things that I would say there is, generally speaking, any kind of curation tools that have been part of a WYSIWYG editor are things that have failed for me and, that, and that's why I haven't suggested that we move forward with that kind of model. The best way to be thinking about curation is um, in the environment where things have already been published, okay, which is what you kind of alluded to when you said, should I curate after importing the pages to the blog? And the reality is yes. In the premium content curation method that I teach at curationprofits.com, if you haven't taken that course, Ruben, you might want to consider it. The main thing is to know that um, you're, you know, we teach curating your own stuff within your own WR1, WR2 rings. Hopefully you guys are familiar enough with that by now that you actually have a good visual image of what I'm talking about whenever I say that. Um, so my point here is that you want to use bookmarklets in general and hopefully you know what a bookmarklet is. A lot of the a lot of curation softwares that are coming out in the Warriors forum and other kind of operations are not really curation centric at all. They're just more ways of either borrowing aggregated content or re-aggregating content or it's just more of the same. Nothing's really changed online actually. What has been added is the acceleration of the frequency of publish, um, the multiple, the number of channels through which you can publish, the amount of video and volume of video that has been published. So really if you would think rather bookmarklet centric than rather than WYSIWYG centric, I don't want you to be thinking about where it's going to be curating while you're publishing your silos and your blogs, it does. We don't want you to be all ready to curate. You know, it's not the place to really be thinking about it. If the place to be thinking about it is okay, once you have your own WR1 centric system and placement of objects in your primary money sites, then go ahead and create some WRS1 social sites that you curate to, and then you can curate it and do that with bookmarklets. Okay, and Ruben, if you have questions on that, just hit our help desk. I'll explain what a bookmarklet is. Also at g dash Okay, I'll okay. take that as a, Matt is not here anymore. No, I'm here, this went quiet for a minute. Can you Can guys hear me? Matt, are you still with us? Yes. Can you hear me? Anything. I have no, yeah, were you able to hear? Can you hear me, Russell? Um, maybe it's an optical illusion, but it does really seem like there's, yeah, I can. Okay. Um, here's a 
the uh, Matt, let me know if you have a problem hearing me. Steve uh, asks, uh, um, how are the bullets handled in a CSS style sheet? Um, basically, when you look at the source code, um, the style sheet will pick up on the LR, these little uh, HTML tags over here, and when they're wrapped with the UL and the LR, the style sheet will see that and it will automatically do whatever it's been set up to to do. Yeah, the LI line is the... Yeah, that's, that's just for the bullets. We are so making some adjustments uh, over the next several weeks, Stephen, to the Google, if you're talking about the plugin itself. Great, okay. Yeah, um, hey, Matt? Yes? You've covered... I have this gut instinct to quit while we're ahead so that we can get this recording. Yeah. You know, this is this is everything, guys. On this screen, uh, as you can see, it's it's pretty basic. There's there's not a lot of. It's not we, a, uh, since we're, it's not a complex thing. Um, so just to close this off, uh, focus on building your site. Don't get too caught up in the technicals and be scared of it. It's very very simple the way we built the screen. So uh, you just go in, write the content, export it out, and it'll build your blog for you. Um, next week, we're going to cover Website Blueprint, and this is where we actually publish the site, and we get, we get it live, and I'll show you how we do that. It's very, very basic. Um, yeah, Russ, if you want to close off, that's fine. Um, I've, I've covered everything on, on, on the content writing screen. Okay, great, Matt. I'll just close it off, and then you just you know get our recording ready, and we'll get the replay to everybody. And I appreciate your time so much, Matt. I know it's late there. Um, I don't see any other questions coming through, so I think we've done a really good job of staying super focused uh, on the content writer screen and the order content screen with only a couple of uh, kind of cul-de-sacs into content curation, and you know those are pretty short. So, if you guys have any other further questions, uh, please do. Uh, contact us and you know where to reach us at the help desk and you know my email is russell at themezoom.com and I know most of you on this call so I have no problem sharing that with you. Also, uh, you are aware, I'm going to be sending this out to everybody, we do have a new One Feed to Build Them All course coming out with a free introductory webinar as well that's going to show you how to use our application this upcoming week. I am trying to get that out to you as soon as I can when I'm not publishing other webinars that we've done over the last two or three days. So um, you can. <laughs> You can expect that out tomorrow or the next day, and I do hope you all sign up and come in to get into the more sophisticated RSS stuff, which we, we dast not cover in the Domain Web Studio um, calls. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, um, And, yeah, hey, Stephen, just play around with the WYSIWYG dashboard. It's all there, okay? And I look forward to seeing you guys on the next call. Please do go to networkempire.com and sign up for the webinar next week at, on Wednesday, our regular Domain Web Studio webinar, and uh, I will update the date on that and put the new link in, and you should be ready to roll. Thanks, Thanks Russell Wright, Matt DeCruz, we look forward to seeing you on the inside.